So when the scheme was first launched, it covered more than 10.74 crore poor and vulnerable families. All the people who are having the age of 70 or above are going to be provided irrespective of their income, they are going to be provided 5 lakh rupees of health cover. More than 30 crore cards, Ayushman Bharat cards have already been issued. So these are the top 5 states where most number of Ayushman Bharat cards have been issued. So this is in 2021, US was investing more than $12,000 per capita. And if you talk about developing countries or uh, the countries which are in the BRICS, that is China, Russia and Brazil, they are investing in the range of 5 to 10%. So according to the national health policy of 2017, the target which was given to the government of India was spending of 2.5% of GDP on public health by 2025. So you can see that whatever target that the government of India set for itself for spending, they were not able to spend. But currently there are 43 countries which provides universal health care for at least 90% of their citizens. Hi everyone, my name is Saurav and today we are going to talk about a recent news report about the government of India's plan of providing free health insurance of up to 5 lakh rupees to all the people above the age of 70 years under Ayushman Bharat scheme. Now this is a step of government that government is going to take in few days. So let's try to understand this in detail. So the Ayushman Bharat scheme was launched by government of India in 2018 and under this health cover or insurance cover of up to 5 lakh rupees is given to per family per year. So every family is going to get a health cover or a health insurance of up to 5 lakh rupees and it is going to be given per year. Now this scheme is going to cover 40% of India's population that is around 50 crore people. Now from time to time obviously this base of uh, population is increased as well. We are going to see that in detail. Now it is a centrally sponsored scheme which basically means that the central government provides the bulk of the funds. Uh, in this case the central government provides 60% of the funds under Ayushman Bharat scheme. Now the organization which is implementing it is the National Health Authority. And uh, since 2019, this organization is implementing this particular scheme across India. Now under Ayushman Bharat till now, more than 30 crore Ayushman cards have been issued and a lot of people have already got the benefits. So when the scheme was first launched, it covered more than 10.74 crore poor and vulnerable families as it is mentioned here, which formed the bottom 40% of India's population. So the poor and vulnerable population of India was covered initially and that comprised of more than 10.74 families, crore families. Now it was further expanded in January 2022 and now uh, by this time more than 12 crore families were covered under this scheme. Later on the scheme was further expanded to include ASHA workers, Anganwadi workers and etc. So that was more 37 more employees were also added in this particular scheme. Now if you talk about the beneficiaries till now, so till now more than 6 crore people have already taken uh, health benefits because of this uh, scheme, because of this health insurance scheme and because of this scheme 1 lakh crore of out of pocket expenditure they have already saved. So it has resulted in saving a lot of money, especially for the poor and vulnerable families across India. So as I said in the beginning, the government of India is now planning to expand the range of this particular scheme and all the people who are having the age of 70 or above are going to be provided irrespective of their income, they are going to be provided 5 lakh rupees of health cover under this scheme. Now the people who are already, the families who are already having 5 lakh rupees of cover under Ayushman Bharat scheme and if they are having a senior citizen then 5 lakh additional top up will be given to them. So the total health insurance cover for that family will be 10 lakh rupees. 
Now this can also be availed by those people or the private employees who are having private insurance like ICICI, HDFC and also the government employees of state, uh, government companies, banks who are given uh, insurance from their own company. So those people are also eligible to get the benefits under this scheme. So as we know that Ayushman Bharat scheme is an application based scheme and so the people who want to avail the benefit they need to first of all register on the portal on that application and there is also a facility of facial authentication and if a senior citizen want to avail this benefit there is a designated link which is also given to make it easy for them to access the benefits. Now since you know that Ayushman Bharat scheme is a centrally sponsored scheme so that means that central government provides 60% of the funds so again in this initiative as well the central government is going to provide 60% of the fund and rest will be provided by the state government. Now the central government is also providing flexibility to the state government to modify the scheme in order to include other age groups as well as it is deemed fit by the state governments. Now let's talk about the new features of this particular scheme. Now it is going to, it is estimated that under this scheme or under this uh, upgradation by the central government to include the senior citizens, it is going to benefit approximately 4.5 crore families which have more than 6 crore senior citizens. So these people are going to be benefited or these people are going to be targeted first and as we know that 5 lakh rupees of free health insurance will be given on a family basis. And a new distinct card will be issued. So it is not going to be availed by people on the already uh, given cards. It is a new card has to be taken by for the senior citizens. And initially the government is planning to bring a pilot launch such that the government can understand what are the flaws in its implementation. And if there will be any issues, the government can rectify it and eventually launch it properly. So there will be a pilot launch for a period of time as well initially later on a full-fledged scheme will be launched and what you have to do is you have to do an e-KYC and once that KYC online is done the card will be issued or operational immediately without any waiting period without any cooling off period so once e-KYC is done your card is operational and you can use it for availing the benefits now the people who are already having uh, this Ayushman card they have to apply again in order to get this distinct card because a separate card than the Ayushman Bharat card. So here in this graph you can see that when the scheme was launched in 2018-2019 at that time around 3 crore cards were issued and over a period of almost 6 to 7 years there is a, there is a jump of almost 10 times that now till 2023-24 more than 30 crore cards, Ayushman Bharat cards have already been issued and uh, a lot of families, in fact, more than 6 crore families have already availed the benefits of health insurance. So in this particular table, you can also see which states have got the most number of Ayushman Bharat cards. For example, uh, the state which is leading the number of cards which are issued, that is Uttar Pradesh and they have been given 4.8 crore card, almost 5 crore Ayushman Bharat cards have been issued to UP alone and then there is MP, there is Maharashtra, Gujarat and Chhattisgarh. So these are the top 5 states where most number of Ayushman Bharat cards have been issued. So now let's also talk about why this particular scheme is being criticized. Now this scheme is criticized is because that it doesn't cover outpatient care. For example, in India, most of the senior citizens are suffering from chronic disease like TB, like diabetes, high blood pressure, etc. And for these kind of disease, uh, not always hospitalization is required and there is a lot of out of uh, or outpatient care that the patient requires. And that's why there is a lot of cost of outpatient care, a lot of diagnostic cost like tests, different kind of tests are uh, uh, conducted. And also a lot of medicinal costs are also there which are not covered under Ayushman Bharat scheme. Although the government provides subsidized medicines as well, but still under the scheme these are not covered 
and which forms almost 40 to 80 percent of the medical cost of senior citizens. So, if you are providing health care benefits or health cover of 5 lakh rupees, which basically requires hospitalization, then in that case, uh, these expenditures are not covered under that scheme. So, the government also has to look or have to make sure that these expenditures are covered under certain schemes. Apart from that, there is also one criticism that is, there is a low penetration of this particular scheme into the smaller cities and towns. So, it is mostly used and availed in the big cities and in small towns and small cities, they still not availed by a lot of people, either by lack of awareness or, uh, or due to corruption or other issues. So, globally, there are two kinds of models in the health insurance which are followed. So, a country can adopt either the USA based model or a model that is Thailand model. Now, both these models are different in nature where one model is particularly favored by European countries or Western countries in general and the other kind of model is the Thailand model which is uh, good for developing countries. Now, uh, but it is said that India is actually going toward the US way. I will tell you the difference between the two models. So, USA based model basically requires that people contribute, they invest, they buy health insurance, eventually health insurance is given to everyone. On the other hand, in Thailand based model, the government focuses on the primary health care, especially in the rural areas where most of the populations are living, such that there is less requirement or all the issues are dealt at the primary health care level as well. So, less hospitalization is required and eventually there will be less spending. So, this is a very cost effective kind of a method and this requires heavy investment by the government and the people. Now, I am going to tell you what is the major difference between the two. If you basically talk, if you see this chart where it is shown that the US is a country which spend one of the highest per capita expenditure on healthcare by any country and that is almost more than 12,000 dollars per capita on per person every year. So, this is in 2021 US was investing more than 12,000 dollars per capita which a lot of country obviously cannot afford and most of the western countries because of their economic power they are able to afford. So, you will see most of these countries are western countries only. On the other hand in Thailand, Thailand in spite of not having that economic power they have worked a lot on their primary health care and because of that uh, the roots have strengthened and they require less hospitalization ultimately reducing the government cost. And in Thailand, there are multiple levels of insurance are also given, ultimately achieving universal health coverage. So now if you talk about uh, the spending of different countries as percentage of their GDP, then you can see this graph that most of the western countries, they are investing more than 10% of their GDP on health and that is why they have a better healthcare system as well. And if you talk about developing countries or uh, the countries which are in the BRICS, that is China, Russia and Brazil, they are investing in the range of 5 to 10 percent and then there are countries which are investing less than 5 percent as well, which includes India as well. So, that shows different levels of health spending as a part of their GDP by different countries and by that logic or by that parameter, India is on the lower side of spending. Now, let us talk about one more thing and that is the national health policy of 2017. So, according to the national health policy of 2017, the target which was given to the government of India was spending of 2.5 percent of GDP on public health by 2025. So, it recommended that the government of India should invest at least 2.5 percent of GDP on public health and later on the national health mission national health mission also talked about they basically gave a roadmap of how to increase the expenditure by the government from 1.4 percent to 2.5 percent of gdp by 2025 so both these missions they talked about increasing the government expenditure on health and increase it to 2.5 percent of gdp 
and it is good to know that we have been able to achieve that target and we have been able to achieve the target of spending of 2.5% of GDP on health. But it is not due to the central government but due to the increase in investment by the state government. Let's see how. So here in this particular image you can see that this was the planned share of center expenditure as part of GDP and if the center would have spent this much money they would have spent but actually what they have spent and how much is the shortfall. So you can see that whatever target that the government of India set for itself for spending they were not able to spend and there was a lot of shortfall almost a shortfall of 1,51,846 crore. Now if you talk about the state expenditure so you can see that there is an extra expenditure done by the states year on year and that is how we were able to achieve the target of expenditure of 2.5% of our GDP on health. So basically there was less or shortfall in the expenditure of the central government and there is a hike in the expenditure of the state government and that is how 2.5% target of national health mission and national health policy was achieved. Now this 2.5% of GDP doesn't only contain the expenditure on health, it also contains the expenditure on clean water and sanitation. So the actual expenditure on health is actually less than 2.5%. <clears throat> now finally let's see how many countries are there in the world which provide universal health cover. Now universal health cover is actually one of the goals under the sustainable development goals that the UN intends to achieve by 2030. But currently there are 43 countries which provides universal health care for at least 90% of their citizens. So in these countries 90% of their citizens are getting universal health cover or they are covered under some form of insurance scheme. There is a country that is Brazil is the only country which offers free health care for all its citizens up to a limit. Now this universal health coverage concept was brought by Norway in 1912 and from there onwards more and more countries adopted this model and now more than 43 countries across the world provides universal health coverage. So this is the topic for the day. I hope you have understood the topic. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Have a good day.